Welcome to MCO 455 Microcontroller Concepts for Summer of 2024. In the May-June section, Professor Scheffler will be teaching the first half. July-August, I'll be teaching the second half. Now, all the theory sections are set up pretty much the same way. This is the AC section, and there's a DF section, total of two theory sections. There's important dates and deadlines, course outline, course addendum, course textbook, professor contact information, video lectures, practice quizzes, chapter quizzes, term tests, final exam, Nearpod results, and Zoom stuff. Under important dates and deadlines, it shows you when various things are due, such as tuition and so forth. But more importantly, it's going to tell you when Seneca is closed. And there's three Monday holidays over the summer. Now, if you wish, you can look at the course outline, but the most important document is the course addendum. In the course addendum, it shows you week by week when various evaluations are going to take place. For instance, in week two, we have a lab one quiz. In week three, we have a chapter one quiz. In week four, we have a chapter two and a lab two quiz. But more importantly, there's various days that the college is closed. As I mentioned before, there are three days, May 20th, Monday. We also have July 1st, which is a Monday. And we also have a Monday, August 5th, where the college is closed. And this is going to necessitate various things being moved. And this is going to impact only two classes, the MCO 455DF theory class and the MCO 455AA lab class. Now it shows you here for the DFs, Chapter 1 quiz has been moved to May 27th, Chapter 2 quiz to June 3rd, Third, chapter 3 quiz to June 10th, chapter 4 quiz to July 8th, and term test 2 has been moved to July 29th. Or the AA lab section, the lab 2 quiz has been moved to June 3rd, lab 3 quiz to June 10th, and the MCO 455 AA lab 4 and 5 quiz is going to be moved to July 22nd to run concurrently. Lab 4 is a very short quiz, so we're going to do that right at the start of the lab class, and then the lab 5 quiz is going to happen after that, and the MCO 455 AA lab test 2 is going to be moved one week earlier up here to the Monday, July 29th. At the end of the addendum on page 3 of 3, you're going to see the theory and the lab breakdown. Chapter quiz is 10%, term test 30%, and final exam 20%. And for the lab, lab quizzes are 10%, and the two lab tests make up 30% of your mark. But the most important thing to remember is you must pass both the lab and the theory to pass the course. If you fail the lab or the theory, you fail the course. For this course, all evaluations are done online. And these will be done in a multiple choice, true, false format. For the entire semester, there's nothing to be handed in. Now, this type of evaluation is true for both the theory and for the lab. As you can see here, all lab evaluations, whether lab quizzes or lab tests, are in person, which means you have to physically be in the lab to do the lab quiz. Anybody trying to do it outside the lab during that same period will be given a mark of zero because they take attendance and anybody's name that's not on the attendance list will get a mark of zero. So you physically have to be in the lab to get credit for any lab quizzes or lab tests. As you can see here, for the theory, whether it's AC or DF, all the classes for theory are done in a flexible mode. What this means is that you can either be at home or be in the class for lectures or evaluations. Now, the problem is with evaluations is if you're at home and you have a problem with the internet and things happen and it kicks out or whatever, I will not be able to reset your attempt and I will not give you another chance at a later date. So because it's flexible, that means that all the evaluations are going to be for theory open book. That means if you come into the class, you can bring anything you like. The only difference between doing it at home and doing it in class is in class you cannot talk. Other than that, everything is the same. You have access to all your resources to do any of these flex tests. All labs are to be pre-done in an open lab before the lab class. The open lab schedule will be made available to you within the first week or so of class. So if you don't pre-do the lab before you come in, then you're not going to understand what goes on. And the lab quizzes themselves are done in the lab class 30 minutes in. So if you've gone to an open lab and you've pre-done the lab, you come into the lab class, and what you're going to have is 30 minutes to ask questions, figure out what you didn't understand and so forth, and then 30 minutes in you do the lab quiz. Now, lab tests are different because the lab tests are going to start right at the beginning of the class and go for 90 minutes. The lab quizzes are going to start 30 minutes into the lab where you can ask questions and so forth. All theory evaluations will have a 15 to 20 minute window in which to start the evaluation. If you're more than 20 minutes late, you won't be able to start the evaluation and your mark will be zero. And this is true whether you're coming into the class or doing it online. So if you choose to do it online and you have any international issues, as I mentioned before, I will not 
be able to reset the attempt and you're not going to be allowed to retake it at a later time. So for the bigger evaluations, such as your term test and your final exam, I strongly suggest you show up to the class. The only thing you can't do is talk, but it's open books. You can bring in all your material. Now, anybody that wants to do it in class can have their attempt reset, and I've done this a number of times for people that came into the class. Students that wish to do it in class must have a laptop, tablet, or a phone with a browser, any combination of these they can bring in. Uh, if you've got a phone, that's fine to do all your evaluations if you wish, or you can use any combination of laptop, tablet, and so forth. And don't forget, all of your theory evaluations are open book. Now, there's a textbook for the course called Embedded IoT using embed. And it has various things in here, such as signed and unsigned conversions, hex addition, hex subtraction, bitwise operations, getting started with IO, serial communications, using growth modules, which we're going to look at in terms of parts list shortly, and wireless and wired cloud communications. Under professor contact information, you'll be able to find information about me. And I'm doing the second half in July, August. So please, in May, June, do not send me any email. Professor Scheffler will probably put his contact contact information here as well because he's doing the May June and he's the person to contact in the first half. The timetable that we both share is this one and it's going to go from May, June, July, and August. For all theory sections and lab sections, the course content is the same up until professor contact information. So you can see that it's got some things that are not in the lab section. We have video lectures and you can see that we have video lectures for week one, week two, week three, four, and five, and six, which is the first half of the course. Then week seven is where we have our term tests and our lab tests and then the break week. So the three weeks back after the break is week seven, eight, and nine. Video lectures will help you understand the material that's in these various weeks. For instance, if I go here to week one video lectures, lab one, part one, using calculators for lab one. So you watch these. Now, the other thing is once you've done that, there are practice quizzes which are not for marks. And again, that's for week one, week two, week three, four, five, and six, which is the first half of the course. Then there's lab test one and term test one in the break week and then seven eight and nine are the first three weeks back all of these practice quizzes here prepare you for questions that are going to show up on your chapter quizzes and we have chapter quiz one two three and so on and this is given again if you remember looking at your addendum it tells you when these quizzes are going to show up on what particular days now going back to the practice quizzes we can look at any of these and we can say okay let's take a look at say number conversions and it's going to run a quiz where we can start attempt one. And we can do these as many times as we want to get better and better at the material that's here through drill and practice. So by doing the practice quizzes, you're going to prepare yourself for the chapter quizzes, which prepare you for the term test, which prepare you for the final exam. And then Zoom stuff is where you're going to see Zoom recordings. And under Zoom recordings, anything that we actually videotape in the class will be posted here. Right, what we've done is we move from our theory to our lab. And this is MCO455AA. And you'll see that important dates and so on. A lot of stuff is the same as we saw in our theory class. However, under labs, we have a number of labs we're going to do. So this is where it changes, where we're talking about labs. So lab specific stuff is in here. And under labs, we have lab quizzes, lab tests, and Zoom stuff, which is where we're going to put any Zoom recordings that we may do in the lab itself. Now under labs, lab one is going to be done. Let's we'll take a look at it. And it's going to show you how to do binary to octal to hex conversions and a number of other things, which you're going to work with in the first week or so. Let's take a look at our addendum. And in our addendum, we're going to be working in the theory class and the lab class both to do number conversions and all the stuff that's on lab one. Now, the lab one quiz is going to happen in the second week, which means we have one theory class, one lab class here to get comfortable with everything on lab one, and then you get the lab one quiz. And as I said at the start, all of our lab quizzes start 30 minutes in, so you can still ask questions about things that are on there. Now, as far as lab one is concerned, once you're finished lab one, you're going to bring in those sheets, and that's all you're going to have in front of you to do the lab quiz. So you can take a look at what you circled that's wrong and be able to then very quickly do that quiz. Now for lab two, we're going to be spending double period to get familiar with everything that's in lab two. The following week, we're going to do a lab two quiz. Now between here and here, there may be some stuff that you weren't able to complete in the lab for lab two. So you're going to have to use one of those open labs that has the equipment, which is a Freedom K64. Under course announcements, you're going to find 
find the required materials to purchase for MCO455. And it says, please note that the Freedom K64, which is our microcontroller, is available for many suppliers, including ones listed in the link below. Of all the things listed though, you do not need to buy the Freedom K64 or the Grove Shield because these are already in the open labs. But you will need to buy the other items, which starts with the LCD backlight and ends with the Adafruit Bluefruit UART Friend. So if we click on this link, it brings up a list of suppliers. All you need basically is to purchase everything from here down to Adafruit Bluefruit UART Friend. You do not need to purchase these two. Now what you're going to find for each of these items that you do have to purchase, there's a link here, and you're going to find that of all these suppliers, DigiKey is the preferred supplier for all the devices that you do have to buy. Now you can try Mouser or Grow, but this is the best, and I'll tell you why. If you order something from DigiKey, usually it arrives on your doorstep in 48 hours or less. And if there's any issues with the device not functioning properly, if you talk to me, they will ship you out one that will work, and they'll again be there within 48 hours without you having to send anything back. For instance, here for the Grove RGB LCD backlit display, and if you look here, it tells you how many are in stock, which means there's a lot. And you just add to cart, and you do that for all the different devices that are in the list. And so you can go through all of these, order these, as soon as you can. However, you do have the option to purchase these two if you want to work from home. Now, these ones here by themselves with tax and shipping are about 100 bucks. This is also about 100 bucks for these two. So it's better to use the ones in the open lab. And basically, you should get them all from the same supplier if you can, because that keeps your shipping cost to a minimum. 